Perhaps like many, you're still talking about last year's drama. Daniel, a lifetime of faith. What moving lessons and awesome depictions of visions and events from his life. Would you like to take a look behind the scenes and see what went into making it? Let's enjoy a tour of some of the work that helped bring this account to life. Many costumes and props were carefully handmade for the production. Spearheads were hand forged. Most of the filming was done at Mount Ebo Studios in Brewster, New York. Some additional scenes were filmed in nearby locations and in Florida. You need to rest. As filming was completed, scenes were edited together, and the visual effects team went to work on many specialized shots. Digital models of people and animals were animated and combined with footage of real environments to make scenes that would have been impossible to film otherwise. For example, a digital model was made of the immense image in King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The team researched the characteristics of the actual materials described in the scriptures, such as metals and rocks, so that when the image falls, it appears realistic and believable. Just look at the results of thousands of hours spent modeling, animating, simulating, rendering, and compositing. What did you see? Hours of hard work? Dramatic visual effects? Bible characters brought to life on screen? Isn't it amazing how they all combine to make what happened thousands of years ago seem so real, so vivid, and faith-strengthening? There's a bit of a Freudian slip there, isn't there? Stephen Lett has just said, in summarizing the work that went into the Daniel drama, the feature film that was shown at last year's convention, he said, isn't it amazing how they all combine to make what happened thousands of years ago seem so real, so vivid, and so faith-strengthening? It needs to seem real. Well, either it's real or it isn't. <laughs> Either it happened or it didn't. It shouldn't be a case of making it seem real. It should be a case of reenacting something that happened. But you can't call it a reenactment. You can only call it a depiction. Because, as I've said many, many times on this channel, what's described in the book of Daniel isn't history. It's a forgery. It's a book that was compiled by people who wanted to share a narrative regarding this awesome character named Daniel. The problem they had, and maybe if Tibor is gracious, a thumbnail will appear to a relevant sushi where I talk about this in more detail. The problem they had was that they didn't seem to have a very good grasp of Neo-Babylonian history, and it showed. So Daniel was supposed to be this super-duper powerful man who had all of these privileges and responsibilities, and yet apparently he couldn't get the order of kings right. And there were certain other things in the book of Daniel that were just historically inaccurate because we know so much about that period in history thanks to how well preserved 
the documents, the clay documents are from that time period. So I have all sorts of issues with the Daniel film that I'm not going to go into all over again. Suffice to say, I actually find it quite interesting to see how this stuff gets put together. And I've given you an abridged version because the actual version is much, much longer. But as someone whose job it is to make video content, I can't help but find it interesting <laughs> to see what goes into these productions. They've admitted here that it took, quote, thousands of hours modeling, animating, simulating, not stimulating, <laughs> simulating, rendering and compositing. I guess you need to judge for yourselves whether it was worthwhile. Is this Daniel film something that will stand the test of time? Is it something that future generations will look back on as a work of genius? As something that was truly groundbreaking? As something that was truly needed and relevant? Or will it get lost in the sands of time? Will it get tossed on the scrap heap of fundamentalist Christian propaganda movies? I think it's more likely to be the latter, personally. But there's also an interesting dynamic here. They are showing what they're capable of doing with the Mount Ebo complex. You saw how lavish their sets are. And not only were they filming at Mount Ebo on their massive sound stages, but they were also going out on location. Maybe if Tibor is gracious, you'll see some footage of some poor Bethelite who got the gig of being in a pond <laughs> or being in some kind of body of water while he was filming. Sadistically, I'd, I'd love there to be a time when Tibor has to do a job like that. Sorry, Tibor. But yeah, that's what they're capable of doing, apparently, with what they have now, with their Mount Ebo complex and with the filmmaking and creative resources at their disposal. And yet they need more. Apparently, everything that we've seen in terms of what they can do with their movie making magic, with their filmmaking prowess, isn't enough. They need Ramapo. They need donations for Ramapo. They need volunteers for Ramapo. They need to build this fabulous new complex that's apparently not going to be ready until 2026, even though Armageddon is imminent. They need more. All of what we've seen isn't enough. And I think that itself begs some questions, doesn't it? Surely that's enough. Surely Mount Ebo and what they already have is enough. The truth is, when you look at what they've said about Ramapo and their justifications for Ramapo, it all comes down to convenience. Oh, we don't want our Bethelites, the governing body. Um, we don't want our Bethelites traveling too far. We'd rather have everything in one nearby location because Ramapo is close to the world headquarters. Well, how come individual Jehovah's Witnesses need to be willing to make sacrifices and inconvenience themselves to the point of crossing crocodile-infested rivers and going to all sorts of acrobatics to make sure that meetings are attended and talks are given and what have you. But when it comes to Bethelites, it's a different standard. Bethelites and, it seems, the governing body need to have everything on a plate. They need to have their conveniences. Mm -hmm.